welcome back to the channel and today i'm about to tell you a very crazy story <laughs> sit back relax um get your popcorn because it's about to be a long one you see in this life i've made a number of silly decisions a number of stupid decisions in my life but I'll tell you for a fact that this particular one is top three stupidest decision that I've ever made in my life. So recently, I went back home to Nigeria and I decided to take a West Africa trip. I started off from Nigeria, went to Benin Republic, to Togo, to Ghana. As a matter of fact, I even made a whole video series which I'll link in my bio. You guys can check it out. So basically, what had happened was that my transportation means... <laughs> it got cancelled last minute. Well, it really didn't get cancelled. It just changed. I was deciding, or I decided that I wanted to do like an adventurous trip across West Africa where I go by boats, then I go by cars, and you know, I just do some something very, very fun. And the first leg was us taking the boat from Marina in Lagos to Porto Novo in Benin Republic. In my mind, prior to this, my assumption and understanding was that we're going to go through a boat that looks like this. But tell me why we ended up going through a boat that looks like this. And this trip would take us over three hours. Three hours of danger. And let me tell you something. You know when you see Nigerian police immigration and all these other security agencies even the ndla when you see them on the roads when they randomly routine routine stop and search cars bro that is not limited to only on land because tell me why throughout this trip i kid you not we were stopped about 10 to 15 times and i okay maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration 15 times or maybe not but i'm pretty sure that we were stopped at least 10 times in the space of three hours on water bro it was crazy so basically i'll tell you guys the story in this video I first you need to check out my benin republic documentary i'm gonna link it up there on the monday morning in lagos nigeria chisom and i had planned prior that we we're going on this trip and so we packed our bags but before we left Lagos, I wanted to grab breakfast because you know what they say. A philosopher once said, last, last, everybody go chop breakfast. Anyways, I went to one of my favorite breakfast spots in Lagos called Miko's. And I went to stuff off my belly. Little did I know that <laughs> I would need a lot of that energy. And so, boom, as soon as I was done, we hit the Uber or got an Uber, headed straight to Marina marina jetty it was also the first time that i was seeing this new train but unfortunately because i had little time in lagos well it wasn't so little but i didn't have a lot of time i didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of things that i planned to do in lagos i couldn't really explore this train but that's not what the story is about we headed straight to the jetty we arrived there just literally on the other side of cms very busy you know as usual on a monday morning dragged in our boxes and we entered there. made inquiries about how to get the tickets you know we bought the tickets i think it cost about eight five which obviously is very cheap and probably the cheapest means to travel from nigeria to the next country which, which is benin republic but little did i know that this is the price that we we're about to pay so it turns out that people take boats from here to other places like badagri porto novo i mean porto, porto novo is where we we're heading to that's in benin republic and there's a place called Liverpool. I thought Liverpool was in the UK. 
but it turns out that there's a Liverpool, maybe in Nigeria or some other place. But yeah, um, they take boats to those places. Um, when you pay, you sit down and then you have to wait for the boats to get filled up. So we sat down and waited for hours. I think we waited for about three hours or something, just sitting down. But while we were waiting, <laughs> about two NDLA officers approached us. Like still in this place that we sat down, they approached us and they asked us to step aside to a room just next to where we were sitting. They, they, they identified themselves and they said they wanted to search, routine search. We had nothing to be to be afraid of, so we're like, yeah, no problem. Search what you have to search. But it was very weird that randomly, you guys just you know routinely picked on the guys that had locks. <laughs> We're looking forward to being out of this country. Somebody I'll go wrong way and eh? Eh? Yeah? What is it? <laughs> you guys just you know routinely picked on the guys that had locks <laughs> in the jetty and you know took us into that place and searched us pat down or whatever yeah that one passed no wahala finally it was about time to get on the boat as soon as we got to the um to the dock i don't know if you can call this a dock but i assume it's also called a dock but as soon as we get to uh, as soon as we got to the dock i realized that omo this thing is very dangerous so the wrong sleep down this thing you're going to end inside that water me i can't swim <laughs> and then i'm about to go on a boat cross con this is not even cross countries cross continent boat trip to the next country for three hours but at least they gave all of us life jackets it was very dangerous you can see this child here literally fell down like she could have fallen into the water as sleep as sleep as has fallen and so we finally started to you know get prepared to go into the boats and let me tell you aside from <laughs> aside from the money that you pay for yourself they pay a separate fee for the luggage now those boats carry up to 20 people together with the luggage so now imagine 20 people that are traveling from nigeria to the next country which is benin some were going to badagri um, but most people were going to benin republic now, each and every one of us had a bag. And so, this boat will carry 20 people. I mean, 18 passengers, the driver and his conductor. And the conductor on this boat was very rude. God, it was absolutely rude. Yeah, so we packed all of our bags and then we got into it. I knew that we were set, you know, set up for an adventure. <laughs> God, I was scared though. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it wasn't even fair. It wasn't like terrified fear at the beginning was more of like on ease which is obviously expected because like what am i doing why am i even taking this boat but i'm not gonna lie it looked fun and in hindsight it was a fun experience but this was a very dangerous one people shouldn't do this if you can avoid it And so we set out for <laughs> our trip to Benin Republic. But tell me why, literally two, two to three minutes after we just left the dock, the boat stopped working right here in the middle of the water. But good thing is we were still next to Marina. So I was thinking, worst case scenario, we just turn around. All of this time, the conductor and his driver were trying to fix it, not communicating to anyone or telling us what was wrong. So we're just there sitting down in this big body of water. <laughs> After <laughs> the adventure begins right here in CMS, Lagos. Just here chilling. They're trying to sort out the engine. You 
Sacaba Bares. After a few minutes, they figured it out and then we continued the trip. When my man was thinking, oh, are you sure that this is not what we're going to continue for the next three hours? Well, I guess we're going to find out as time goes on. At this point, my back was killing me already because the seats were so uncomfortable. It was literally hardwood we were sitting on. Then the water is splashing into you, your face, your my shirt was getting soaked every other minute. Then you get dry, then get soaked again, then get dry, then get soaked again. So what happened is that because of the size of the boat, right, and because of how many people are on the boat, anytime this guy stopped the boat would kind of sink into the water but then for him to then start again he needed a lot of momentum so because he's then you know riding fast the wind is blowing the water and the water is blowing all over our body um and then probably would have to ride for about maybe one or two minutes for the boat to get proper momentum and for it to sit on water properly How are you feeling? Sensational. After about 10 minutes or so of the boat ride from the last time that we stopped, we approached Tinkan Island. For those who don't know, Tinkan Island, Tinkan Island is the popular ship dock or wharf where lots of most of Nigerian imported goods come through. So if you're buying a car from America, Australia, Canada, wherever it is you're buying anything from, it goes through Tinkan Island. Is it Tinkan? 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 Anyways, you guys get the vibe. And so the journey continues. We continue to just ride on the waves. <laughs> oh more, it wasn't for you. At this point, it was getting pretty calm. You know, the view was actually pretty beautiful. We we're seeing different villages on the left and the right. And so it didn't really feel like you were far away from humans. You know, it looked like on the left and the right, there were, we, we, we saw houses, so it looked like there were people there. Um, some parts would actually see people and some other ones, you just see ni nice houses too, you know, with the palms and everything. The journey was starting to become more enjoyable and not as bad as before, but on more. The next phase is when we then started to get stopped by different security agencies. Bro, I kid you not, from the immigration to the naval is it the yeah the naval guys that's the naval the um the navy to the um ndla the drug enforcement agencies then the police bro the fact that the police can stop you on water in this life 
Now, one of the reasons why we decided to go through water was because we've heard that if you travel through road, it's always very, very hectic and stressful because of how many stop points and checkpoints you have to, you know, um, stop when you're traveling via road. And for whatever reason, we just assumed that it wouldn't be as stressful or as crazy when we go through water. Bro, that's a big fat lie. It was, it was equally as crazy. They were stopping us and stopping us. Unfortunately, I couldn't film, but one of the strangest experiences was at some point we all had to raise up our hands like prisoner of wars i kid you not like you have to raise up your hand when you see when they see the um, ndle or one of those agencies basically now another thing that kept happening within this trip was that at every point and i kid you not this is no lie at every if we stopped at 10 points like the 10 secure let's let's assume that we stopped at 10 different security agencies at least eight of them were asking our um driver our, they were asking our boat drivers to add additional people to the boat and essentially overloading the boat like at some point the guy had to tell off one of them that listen don't do that we are not going to carry any other person because you're overloading us because more than just even carrying them some of them were even then coming in with extra load anyways i was trying to adapt i saw my friend chisom was reading a book so i asked him to give me one <laughs> i tried to do it for like a minute or something now nah, i couldn't but human beings easily adapt to things because tell me why these people on this <laughs> these people on this boat started to sleep They are getting so comfortable and sleeping. After some time, we finally got to Badagri, which was our first proper stop. Some people got off in Badagri while some other people came on. And then they refueled the boat with fuel because it's powered by petrol, I believe. Either petrol or diesel, I'm not too sure, but essentially it's powered by one of these fuels. <laughs> No, I don't really actually do it. Since then, I just. I feel like. I'm over this trip already. So, if you want to come down to Badagi, I'm sorry, so I feel like I'm over Badagi. You just can't go back. Just can't go back home. Boys, go back home. Yes. Increase. I can't even go now. Yeah, but the thing is, apparently. That one said, no, even. Like it's stressful. Nah, you still pass like many checkpoints in Nigeria. Yeah. So just hold tight, my man. Hold tight. Hold Don't give up. Eh? I Holding tight. We are not about to give up. This guy is about. To, he was thinking about giving up, but we don't quit here. So finally, 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 we started to approach Porto Novo. Now, Porto Novo is where we come off from, right? So we come off at Porto Novo when you get to Benin Republic. But one thing that was very striking in the difference, you know, of the two countries was how we were treated by our own security agencies versus how the ones in the Benin Republic or on the Benin Republic side treated us. It was the energy you know our own guys they just seemed very hostile not very nice then try to even put your life at risk by adding those additional people on the boat then the fact that we even had to stop every other minute was so annoying and as well as being risky as well like for god's sake why is there police stop on the water there was police stop on the water the conductor had to leave the boats to go um you know to the police station so essentially because the waters that we travel through on both sides had land so on one of the sides the police station that we went through um the conductor had to stop and then you know go and meet them they even delayed us there i don't know if they collected a bribe but i don't want to speak on that if because I, I didn't see it for a fact 
or we're just there sitting but this whole thing made the whole trip so stressful like it made no sense why i could have or why i should have experienced that on water like it was so stressful it was too 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 much and aside the fact that the police and the other you know agencies were stopping us it was just extremely scary like it was extremely scary in hindsight it was an exciting journey but it's not it's definitely something i'll never do again in my life finally we are, we we finally we arrived at porto novo step out of the boat well before we are, before we got to the, the to their own jetty we were stopped by the immigration who you know did a routine check checked our passports or id card so that's one of the good things of this route you can travel with an, an, an id card to just prove i think your nationality and i'm not gonna lie to you there were a few people on that boat that didn't have an id card um but then again within west africa ease of traveling like because of the passport that we have allows us like we have that ease of traveling um but yeah i just thought to share to share with you guys my experience you know Just touch down. Bro, imagine. Just touch down. In my life. <laughs> Never again. Never again. <laughs> Will I try? Bro, you know those experiences that you, it's not there's no point repeating it. Just one time. It's enough. Yeah? Who? If you haven't seen my other videos about my travels in Benin and Togo. I want you to check out the videos in my description. I would also link them up. And if you have not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to also smash the like button because it helps the algorithm. Check out my other travel trips across Europe, as well as my documentaries about African stories that reside today in Europe.